everybody. My name is Sophia Perola and I'm here with Garden State Film Festival with Ash Patino. How are you, Ash? Good. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for taking some time out to talk to us about this amazing documentary called PTSD, The Walking Wounded. It is very, very powerful. I was telling you before that I saw it and it's very impactful and the message needs to be out. I'm so happy that this is accepted into the festival. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we put our heart and souls into it. So I'm happy it's translating the way we want it to. So oh thanks for watching. It. Absolutely. You can tell there's so much love and, and soul in this in this documentary. So before we get into this interview, I'd love for you just to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about um, your film. Uh, my name is Ash Patino. I live in uh, Northern Jersey here. Um, and the film that the Garden State Festival accepted is the PTSD, The Walking Wounded. And it's a story about our military men and women and their struggles when they return um, dealing with PTSD and some of the fallout from that. And I kind of got into it because there was a group in New York called Play For Your Freedom. It's such an amazing group, but the gentleman was taking veterans out and playing football with them to make them feel better. So I, I was a little skeptical. <laughs> I was like, how does that work? How does that, is that really a thing? And so when I went out and I watched the transformation of these men, it, it really blew my mind. And then the expansion of the program, it wasn't just about playing football. What I had thought it was much more. It, they always found a role for each person, no matter if they had a disability or not. Um, and it even extended into like yoga and art and other things, but it was really basically about them building a community for these veterans. It wasn't really about football so much as building the community and strengthening that and, and helping the veterans realize that they weren't maybe alone and that there were a lot of other people actually going through very similar things and, and at different parts of the process. Some people were just realizing that they had PTSD and some people had been had learning to live and manage it for, you know, five, 10 years. So it was incredible to see these weave together so the people who were right at the start of trying to fight this were like oh hey look this guy's made it 10 years or this girl's made it five years like I can do that too and so then it became really what I learned about PTSD I wanted to share with the world because I was like whoa this is so real and so insane and we always think of it in this Hollywood film type where some guy comes out with a gun and he you know murders his family and then he's in jail the rest of his life like we we picture things like that when it's um there's a lot of subtle uh things that happen with PTSD that probably don't need a Hollywood movie dedicated to them, but it's for uh, for people who are dealing with it, they get to feel and see that that's a real thing and know that there's hope and help for it. Oh my gosh, that is so amazing. So when you first came across um, Play For Your Freedom with David Lionheart, who was an executive producer on this, right? Yep. Wow, so when did that first happen? What was meeting him and, and learning about that uh, you know, community to now, what was, how long was that process? Um, I, I filmed with them for probably over the course of a year and watching, but I kind of was there almost from the beginning um, because I had just gone out to help, not, not to shoot the film. I had just gone out to help because I was like, okay, cool. I'll go volunteer. Like, that sounds fun. But that first time I was there, you saw David Lionheart was like, focused. He was like setting up tables and tents and do, getting the football stuff ready. And it was just really funny to watch from an outsider perspective. The guys came in and they kind of steamrolled him and they were like smoking and cursing. And um, But what was really interesting is their whole mentality changed. They seemed like they had kind of been maybe dragged there at first. And then they were like, by the time they left, they were engaged and and excited about it. And then they came back the next time, which I think kind of surprised us all because of what had happened the first time. But they came back and they were now ready to help. They had brought other vets with them. And it's just started to build from people being excited about what was going on and having a, something to look forward to each week or each month to get to go do with this group. Um, and so many friendships have been made through it. It's like wild to see people who kind of were quiet and alone when they first got there now are like, you know, high-fiving and they're the life of the party. 
Um, so it's just like, it's, and it's a safe spot too. Like there's not drugs or alcohol there, you know, it's, it's, it's meant to be a safe spot because a lot of times people with PTSD, that's a, a symptom of that is addiction. So, you know, we wanted, or David, not me, excuse me, David wanted to create a beautiful space for them. And I just was so blown away to see this in action that I really wanted to be a bigger part of it. I mean, that's amazing. You can tell in this documentary how important it is, just like you said, to have a community, to have people who know what you're going through and have some place that they can go and, and release and escape. And it's like therapy. That's it. That is so beautiful. So you were producer, director and editor on this documentary. What is it like producing a documentary? I mean, it looks like from your background that this is not your first rodeo. You've done a lot with film. So I'd love to know when it comes to this. Um, what experience did you come into with it and what went into picking these people with their stories? You know, how did you produce this? Yeah, um, I did have to wear a lot of hats and I do that on all of my projects, not because I want to, <laughs> but because financially it's how it just has to be done right now. Although I do like having my hands and everything. So I think I, even if I had a huge budget, I of course would still have my hands and everything, but um, it's, it was, uh, it was just cool to see um, as I was at Play for Your Freedom and started to meet some of the people is really how the subjects of the film came about. And then with David Lionheart's recommendation, but there were just some guys who had, you know, been there from almost the beginning um, or the woman in the film, you know, she has lost someone close to her and now she's in this fight too, to help save people from committing suicide, basically. I mean, um, I did talk to the disabled American veterans the other day. They did say the numbers not as at 22 per day committing suicide anymore that it's closer to 15 to 20 which that makes me happy that there's strides being made so you know our goal with this film was to you know maybe even hopefully knock that down more um, we're probably not gonna be able to stop everything but at least to mitigate it so we tried to find people who embodied that um, discovery of finding out PTSD within themselves and what that meant to their lives and then also the people who are fighting to get people to recognize what PTSD is um, get their families and friends to recognize it so if they see it in their loved one and then what they can be doing to help that so we kind of looked for people who had embodied that message or you know who or who were experiencing it themselves. Wow. And some of the stories, actually all the stories that the people that you found are so, they're very vulnerable. They're very, very heavy. It talks about trauma. It talks about very real personal stories. How did you create that, you know, space for someone to really be so vulnerable in front of a camera? Yeah. I'm always really surprised what people are willing to um, so lovingly and caringly divulge because we need, it's, it's what we bury inside is often what damages us. I think that's so clear in so many spots and that's definitely clear with PTSD. So like something that nobody wants to talk about that all these people came and talked about so openly. And then, and then it was amazing to see their transformations even during the film, because then they wanted they want wanted people to hear their stories. They they weren't like embarrassed, which they should never be, but apparently that's something they feel sometimes or shame over it. And so it was just amazing to see them be like, no, 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 I want people to hear my story. I want someone to reach out to me that's going through the same thing. And I want to tell them, you know, go talk. I did this. Maybe it'll work for you. I don't know, but try it. Or, you know, they all of a sudden became fighters, like a little army here in, in the States um, uh, on the war against PTSD, I guess. So uh, it was really cool that they all just kind of um, opened up and allowed me to ask those questions. There, there's one part in the film where I had asked one of the guys if he had attempted suicide. And it's this, everyone, the whole crew in the room was just like, you could have dropped a pin and heard it. It was like a minute of almost silence where we were all like, uh oh, did I ask, did I push too far? And I, I do a pre-interview just to make sure, but I was like, wow, maybe he wasn't. Did I understand that he wanted to talk about this? So then all of a sudden I got really like, oh no, did I cross the line? And then he spills out the whole story. And it, it was just, it was this crazy moment where people need to see that. Cause I think there's a lot of people who have either been close to where he was or have thought about the things he was doing. And I think to see that in such a strong, you know, military individual is like, it's incredible to see that there's this soft human part. It's not, you know, just about fighting a war and being brave that they're, they're human too. So I thought that that moment was really powerful.
it, it really was. I know exactly which part you're talking about and like, and, and keeping that silence because you see it on it. There's so much that you, you put in this documentary that it felt like I was there. It felt like you, you were, it just, it, it was amazing watching him, re, him relive it and then being on the outside watching that. So what, as, you know, being there in that room, asking those questions, feeling that tension, I don't know what feelings were developing and then coming back to edit that, what was that process like for you? Well, it was, um, it's always a lot when you take on somebody else's story. Uh, I've gotten very good at compartmentalizing because a lot of my films are about really heavy content, but it is, it's like a process. It's, it's funny for, even for me, I have to sometimes take a minute, even after the interviews, often I don't want to work the rest of the day. I like, I need a minute to, sure. to digest. Yeah, digest what I've heard. So when I start watching it for the edit, it's a little easier to take in because I already know what the hits are going to be. And so, you know, for myself, there's just a gentle process of making sure if it get, if I get overwhelmed that I can step away for a second um, and just go work out or go for a walk or play with my dog and then come back to it when I'm ready. Um, and I think that that helps a lot because if I take that little bit of time, I can get to the heart of the story and what's important in those. So it's always a, it's always a process of, you know, trying to pick and choose the best footage, trying to honor the subjects in a way that represents what they had said appropriately. Cause obviously, you know, you interview someone, it's three hours long and then you use 10 minutes of it. So it's like, how do I tell their story in 10 minutes rather than three hours? where it will be engaging for people and people can learn, but they're not like overwhelmed because some of this content's hard to take in. So I also don't want to overwhelm somebody who might not be as adept at watching that level of content. So you always have to add those like kind of cathartic moments or fun times also, and also deliver the message. So it's just a process of trying to weave that. Wow, that sounds like a lot of hard work, but you did it like so beautifully. So I'm guessing that it took a lot of experience for you to be as good as, was this your first, this wasn't your first documentary? No, I had done one before called Mallory um, in Jersey. And then before that, I was doing narrative films, but I had done a ton of short documentaries, but those are were more for like a company or a group or something like that, not, not at this scale. So really in the last two or three years is when I've gotten into, now almost all I do is films and series. Um, so that's, uh, it's my career. So I've been shooting since I was eight years old, basically. So it was like obvious, eventually it was going to hit this point. It just took time to get there, so... Oh my gosh. So you start off with this very tragic and overwhelming fact in the beginning of the documentary that 22 uh, veterans commit suicide per day, which at first I, I thought it was year, which was still huge. And then I was like, wait, I had to look back. That's per day. And you just mentioned earlier that that number has gone down, which obviously it's still big. It should be zero, but, but it has gone down. So what are you, what, in what ways can audience members who watch this or who know veterans, how can they help? And what do you hope this documentary does playing at Garden State Film Festival? You know, I think it's, it's, it's seeing that message. Like we've had people reach out who have watched it, who have said they showed it to their families because their families didn't really understand what PTSD was. And, you know, some of these guys aren't big talkers, you know, they're, they're quiet and they, they're um, stoic. So maybe it's a way for someone to communicate to their family, what they might be going through, or if they have an outburst, maybe don't engage them, let them, let them be and go do your own thing and then give them an hour and come back and talk to them. So it's just, you know, really a practical tool, I think. And also, I think so many times we think we're isolated and alone and we don't realize there's other groups that are feeling the same way. So maybe they don't know, you don't know you have PTSD. Watch the film. I'm pretty sure by the end of the film, you'll have a pretty clear idea if you have it or not. So I hope that the people at the Garden State Film Festival watch it. I, I hope people share it. And I hope if some they, they see someone struggling, that they help get that to them. We've we've gone with the film and done um, showings at different VAs and stuff like that. So if there is a group that wants to see it, you know, we want them to see, it. we want, we want the information out there. And, and, you know, so I think it's uh, I hope that that's what happens at the garden state film festival. People watch it and they recommend it to someone who might be struggling or a group that might find use in it. Oh, beautiful, beautifully, beautifully said. That's such a great way to end off this interview. I wish I could talk to you more. Like, I feel like I could ask so many more questions, but this was so eye-opening for me, this interview, talking to you about it, and also this documentary. Um, I'm familiar with PTSD, but not so much with veterans and what they go through in the aftermath. And it, 
it is so powerful. It's so important that you made this and that these veterans were honest and vulnerable with you. And in this documentary, I can't wait for audiences to see it, especially at Garden State Film Festival. Congratulations. Yeah, we're all, thank you. We're honored to be part of the festival. Thank you so much for including us. And uh, we hope it goes well. It definitely will. And thank you. Yes. Thank you to everyone who was involved, to all the veterans, to David, to you. Thank you for making this documentary. Thank you so much. I'm I, just from me, but I'm sure everyone wants to say thank you because it, it's really powerful. Um, to tell everyone when they can watch uh, PTSD, The Walking Wounded, it will be playing at the Berkeley Hotel in the Continental Room in the block 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. on Saturday during the festival run. So um, will, will you be there by any chance? Oh, definitely, yep. We're gonna oh. try to get a bunch of the people from the film. I will definitely be there, but we're gonna try to get others from the film too. So we'll probably have a group of five or six, I think. Oh my gosh, I hope so. I hope people can share this and veterans can come see it and anyone connected. It, it's just so amazing. Thank you so much, Ash, for taking the time to talk to us about it and for being the creative entrepreneur that you are. It's really an, like awesome. Uh, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you, have a great day. Bye-bye.